when you look at the big questions of humanity, of hate, war, what else is there? Evil, maybe there's the positive aspects of that, of meaning, of love. Um, what is the fact that reality is an illusion? <laughs> perceived uh, what what is the conscious realism when applied to daily life what kind of impact does it have a lot and it's it's sort of scary um we all know that life is ephemeral and spiritual traditions have said wake up to the fact that you know anything that you do here is going to disappear but it's even more ephemeral than perhaps we have thought i see this bottle because I create it right now. As soon as I look away, that data structure has been garbage collected. That bottle, I have to recreate it every time I look. So I spend all my money and I buy this fancy car. That, that car, I have to keep recreating it every time I look at it. It's that ephemeral. So all the things that we invest ourselves in, we fight over, and we kill each other over, and we have wars over. These are all, it's just like people in a virtual reality simulation. Right, and and there's this this Porsche, and we all see the Porsche. Well, where, that Porsche exists when I look at it. I turn my headset and I look at it, and and then if Joe turns his headset the right way, he, he'll see his Porsche. But it's, it's not it's not even the same Porsche that I see. He's creating his own Porsche. So these things are exceedingly ephemeral, and 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 now, uh, just imagine saying that that's my Porsche. Well. You can agree to say that it's your Porsche, but but really, the Porsche only exists as long as you look. So so this all of a sudden, what the spiritual traditions have been saying for a long, long time, this gets cashed out in in, in mathematically precise science. It's saying ephemeral, yes, in fact, it, it lasts for a few milliseconds, a few hundred milliseconds while you look at it, and then it's gone. So so the whole idea, why are we fighting? Why do we hate? It's we fight over possessions because we we think that we're small little objects inside this pre-existing space time. We assume that 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 mansion and that car exists independent of us, and that somehow we these little things can have our sense of self and importance enhanced by having that special car or that special house or that special person. When in fact, is just the opposite. You create that mansion every time you look. That's that's you're the you're something far deeper than that mansion. You're the entity which can create that mansion on the fly. And there's nothing there there's nothing to the mansion except what you create in this moment. So so all of a sudden, when you take this point of view, it it has all sorts of implications for how we interact with each other, how how we treat each other. Um. And again, a lot of things that spiritual tra traditions have said, it's a mixed bag. Spiritual traditions are a mixed bag. So let me just be right up front about that. I'm not promoting any particular, but they do have some insights. Yeah, they have wisdom. They have certain wisdom. They have, I can point to nonsense. I won't go into it, but I can also point to lots of nonsense. So, so the, the, the issue is to then to look for the key, the key insights. And they, I think they have a lot of insights about the, the ephemeral nature of, of objects in space and time and not being attached to them, including our own bodies, and reversing that I'm not this little thing, a little consciousness trapped in the body. And the consciousness itself is only a product of the body. So when the body dies, the consciousness disappears. The, it turns completely around. The consciousness is fundamental. The body, my hand exists right now because I'm looking at it. My hand is gone. I have no hand. I have, I have no brain. I have no heart. If you looked, you'll see a heart. Whatever I am is this really complicated thing in consciousness. That's, that's what I am. All the stuff that I thought I was is something that I create on the fly and delete. So this, whole, so this is completely a radical restructuring of how we think about um, possessions, about identity, about survival of death, and, and and so forth. This is, is completely transformative. But the nice thing is that this whole approach of conscious agents, unlike the spiritual traditions, which have said in some cases similar things, they've said it imprecisely. This is mathematics. 
we can actually now begin to state precisely, here's the mathematical model of consciousness, conscious agents, here's how it maps onto space-time, which I should sketch really briefly. And here's why um, things are ephemeral, and here's why you shouldn't be worried about the ephemeral nature of things, because you're not a little tiny entity inside space and time, quite the opposite, you're the author of space and time. 